Well, did you want to know that Mr. Kulik was accurate, that he was right? There's a little dude with a machete, hacking away. Click, click, man, why don't you make him? Why don't you make him long machete? I think he's cutting, cutting wood maybe, but I don't have my eyeglasses on, so you can see it better than I can from 4,000 miles away because I don't have my eyeglasses on. <laughs> Happy noon. Some people walking by, hanging around. I don't know why. Just, they were just kind of standing here for, just standing, and now they're walking through. It's a pretty day. I'm gonna do some running here at CTI, Catholic Theological Institute. I was just up to see Brandon in his office, up those stairs. Then I went into the library to see Mr. Morris. Feeling kind of blue today. I got up late. I was gonna, you know, I was gonna sleep in a little late, which I shouldn't have done. I can't do that anymore because it makes me feel blue and makes me feel like I haven't accomplished anything, you know. At least if I've been up by seven, which is my usual time, then, you know, I've got a few hours of work done. What am I doing today? Well, now I'm going to go running because I need to for my mental health. I, really, I just need to get out and just be outside. But uh, I started doing some scans for profits. I finished my notes. Yay! I finished my notes last night. I finished transcribing all my notes for profits from the class I took. Oh, there's a rather interesting insect. Oh, it just flew away. I wonder if you could see it. Oh, there it's back. Oh, it's back. It's almost like a dragonfly of some sort. Anyways, um, I finished the notes, so I'm very happy with that. But then I... As you know, you know, you discover when you're doing it, you know, that your stuff is incomplete, and that's what I, you know, have discovered. That uh, stuff that I thought I had learned, or I guess I learned it other places, you know, I must have learned it other places because there's stuff in my notes that are not there, and it's just, it was a course on prophetic literature, and yet. Um, most of it was about Elijah and Elisha, <laughs> who are prophets, of course, but it's talking about, I guess it was talking more about the, I guess, the role of prophetism in Israel and Judah as well, but Israel in general, which is fine, but I might cover that within the first few classes and then move on to specifically the prophets. So it's good. But I've got a lot more work to do because now I've got to fill in gaps. I've got to fill in gaps between um, the theory of what a prophet is, what the job of role of a prophet is. And then, you know, there's a little bit about some of the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah. I think the teacher did Amos, Hosea, Micah. And then that was about it. And I guess he just ran out of time, as we all do as teachers, you know, we... We, we cram, we do everything, do all this stuff in the beginning, and then we cram everything in the end. And, and I have to reverse that in my mind. I have to, like, do as little as possible in the beginning so I can get everything done by the end. <coughs> and uh, maybe if maybe it'll be counterintuitive by trying to do as little as possible in the beginning. It will free me up to actually talk a little bit more about the things. I don't know, maybe. But also... I know it definitely will give me the opportunity to, like, like get stuff done. And the little kids are gone. I have to remember not to call them the talk peace in word because the talk peace in word can be offensive or is offensive in the United States. And since we're so insane about race these days, uh, 
even more insane than we used to be. People would not understand, so I try to say child or lik lik man, lik lik mary, something like that, a workaround for the word. And I should say about Kulik's talk that was on CNN, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then go on my YouTube page and look up this, look at the CNN, uh, or the C-SPAN, not CNN, the uh, interview from C-SPAN, the book, uh, for the book, um, interview for authors of books on C-SPAN that I put up, and you can see that, and you'll know what I'm talking about. This guy Kulik talked about how you know, white women are called missus and white men are called master. So that doesn't happen anymore. People don't come up and call me master. They just don't. They call me mista from mister in English. But people don't call um, white people master and missus. Maybe in the bush, but that hasn't been my experience here. I'm not saying that there isn't racism embedded in the language. You know, for example, the word boy is embedded in a lot of words. So, like, a guy who war works at an office, uh, like a secretary, would be called an office boy. Or someone who's a, I don't know, uh, an assistant or something, something like that might be called a house boy and stuff like that. So, that you have to be careful with, because that is embedded racism that's embedded into the, the language. You know, for, you, you can almost hear the Australian overlord saying, hey, boy, boy, come here, boy, you know even to a man, you know, so that you ha I, you know, have to, you have to be careful with. But then there are other words in pissin that I don't like that are just pissin. Like the word for poor man is rabis man, garbage man. <laughs> you know, rabis is from rubbish in English, which means garbage, junk. And so, you know, a poor man is, is called, a, you know, garbage man. I don't know if that's what the if it means that the person who picks through garbage because he's poor but to me in my mind it sounds like you're saying that he's worthless hey father peter it's father peter silong who's up at the seminary and he looks like he's taking some people somewhere he's from kimbe if i remember correctly on uh, new britain island kimbe yeah, I think he's from Kimbe, on New Britain Island. Uh, I think Kimbe is the capital of West New Britain province on the island. Anyways. So, yeah, so there is a racism embedded in the language to some extent. Um, but not much, you know, in certain terms, but not, not much, not as much as you might think. Um, like, you know, uh, anyways, so, yeah, so, I got my notes done, and now, you know, I was going to do scanning and stuff, but, you know, then my brother Seth's voice came into my head, like, why are you doing the scanning? Just take the notes, <laughs> you know, just sit there with the book and take the notes, you know? Yeah, here's Mr. Peter. Hello, Mr. Peter. Hello. Why don't you make him? Why don't you make him today? Oh. Cut him. Let me cut him grass. He's mowing. Mowing the grass. He's the uh, one of the handymen around here. I don't know what Mr. Koru is doing. The other day they were fixing the uh, fence that is at the entrance of the women's uh, bathroom, washroom. So, anyways, see, I heard Seth's voice in my head. Why? Well, I guess you have the book. Just take the notes, you know. It's like, okay, all right, you know, because you know that's what I do. I scan things into my computer, and that's great because then I have the article or I have the book chapter. I have something with the information, and then I do uh, optical. What it's called OCR, optical something recognition. I can never remember what the C means. But anyways, which scans the text and, you know, and turns it into, uh, well, text, you know, from an image, scans the image for text and converts it into text so you can do word processing, you can highlight it and copy and paste it into a document and work with it. 
And then I do that, I'll do that, and I'll format everything. And then, you know, I'll have to read it. Because <laughs> you know? I haven't really read it yet. I've just done all this format scanning and copying and pasting and formatting. And I never seem to get to the reading part. Or I'll read a little bit of it, but I don't won't read all of it. And so I just have to go against my nature, my obsessive compulsive nature, and listen to my brother Seth, who's very practical. You got the buck, just sit there and take the notes, you know? So that, at the end of the day, I've taken down the notes that I want, and no, do I have the article? No, I don't have the, the article or the book but in the computer, but you know what? I guess that's okay. Everything will be okay. Because I don't have time. I've got two weeks. I've got two weeks for this. And it seems like I'm going to be teaching one course on profits, another course on um, ecclesiology, which I'm not even thinking about. I haven't even been thinking about yet. And uh, I have to type the notes for that. And then they want me to teach modern church history for like a month because the person who's on her way here, going through the process of getting her visas and permits, she's not gonna pro probably not gonna be here for September. So I'm gonna have to teach like almost half her course because it begins the last week of August, then September, then October. So I'm gonna have to teach like half her course, you know? And, uh, and then we have comprehensive exams in November. And so I've got to come up with questions for that. Which I'm just going to have to throw something together. The stuff that I know, so, you know, I can't... Uh, so I can at least know if the person is answering the question correctly. And uh, so it's going to be a busy term. And two weeks, as my family knows, is not enough for me. Sometimes a year isn't enough. Six months a year. Oh, someone's going into the library. I don't know who. Okay, so I want to get jogging because then I'm going to go out and I'm going to get some food. I'm going to buy some food at the store. I think I'll buy some Indian food and then come back. And then I guess I'll spend the rest of the night. Uh, well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I have some options. Uh, there's always something to do. That's not the problem. There's Mr. Pita with his uh, lawnmower. That's not the problem, finding things to do. There's always something to do. Something here and there. Maybe I should divide my day where during the day I just work on school. and But then I'd have nothing, no time during the night. I'd just be working from the moment I got up until I went to bed. Just doing something, pushing paper. You know? And I do want some time to myself to maybe watch something on the computer, watch a movie or something. Um, anyways, so that's it. So I love you all. This is another little video of me just talking. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll take some video when I go out later. All right, I'll see you around. Oh. All right, here I am off on my way. Notice I'm wearing a different hat. I bought, a, well, I call it a rascal hat because the rascals for some reason seem to like this type of hat, but I'm wearing it. And I like to wear it because people see it and they, just putting the car into gear, um, and they like it, you know? People are proud of their country in a weird way, even though people don't really, I, identify so much with it it's if that makes any sense but they certainly love to see the colors of their country and their flag almost as much as Americans you know people walk around with flag colored shirts and the flag on the shirt and of course flag on the hat so I've got it on the hat look how just to give you a sense of how small this car is I mean my head is right here and when I drive like when I wear the baseball cap it always hits into the visor here. It's awful. It's, this is a really tiny car. But luckily it's not too tiny. It's not uncomfortable. <laughs> it's Mr. Peter who just walked by. He's finishing up his mowing, I guess, because it's starting to rain a little bit. 
put the uh, windshield wipers on on uh, this intermittent. Let's see. Okay, we'll put that on there. Okay, so I'm off. I mean, there's nothing new to see. It's the same old roads. But I think, I don't know if I've shown you Gordon's supermarket before, so I'll show you that. I'm going to my Indian restaurant place, and I've shown you that before, so there's nothing to show, nothing new there. So I'll see you later. This is something you see during the day, just about every day except the weekends. You know, the boys walking back from school, and the girls from De La Salle College, which is a high school. They call college at high schools colleges as per the European or the British or Australian model. So we see people walking back. Okay, you've seen this before. So I just wanted to show you the people and the girls and everybody. And now I've got to slow down. Well, here I am, I'm at nine mile at the traffic circle. And there's like a huge pothole that has developed here amongst other potholes. It's awful. I know this PMB is going to pull out in front of me, but okay. That's par for the course with the PMVs. But anyways, um, you would think that because it's the national... Yeah, well, well, there you go. You would think... Sorry, but... You would think that since it's the national capital district that, and all the politicians are here, and the elites are here, rich people live here, you would think that, uh, I gotta go up into another gear, hold on. You would think that, uh, you would think that they would maintain at least the, the infrastructure around the city, around Port Moresby in the, in the NCD area, the National Capital District, but they don't. And there are a huge bunch of potholes there at that traffic circle that have developed. Um, I think they had been there before. Hold on, I have to go up to another gear. Third gear, there we go. You would think that they would maintain the infrastructure just because of self-interest, because they live here. But, no. The infrastructure around here sucks. Just as bad, well, it's better than... I gotta get around this guy. He's putting along. Don't know what his problem is. But, uh... You would think the infrastructure would be somewhat better, and it's not. It's just here. I don't even know who built it. I don't know if it was the Australians or PNG. But uh, it's just been let to be fat, left fallow and to crumble. And you would think that the elites around here would keep things nice, at least for themselves, out of self-interest, but they don't. Okay, see you later. Okay, I've got to I've gotta show you this. This is just hilarious. I just have, I'm going around the traffic circle again because I just have to show you this. There's a guy here selling like a hawk. Watch out. It's a guy selling, cab just pulled out in front of me. This guy, look at him, the guy's selling like a hawk. He's selling, look at him, I mean, I hope you could see him. He's like selling. Okay, I'm here. Looks like the sun is coming out a little bit. It's still kind of raining. But uh, PMV almost took off the back of the car at the last traffic circle. Oh, ambulance going to the hospital. Almost took off the back of the car during the and at the traffic circle. So trying to lock the car. Okay, there we go. So anyways, I just wanted to tell you that. Anyways, it was funny about the guy with the hawk because he was like, hold, he was like holding out the hawk's wing so you could see that it had, a, I guess it had a wing 
or the wingspan, you know, he's like showing it off. And it's like, I know I went around really fast, but of course I, there was traffic, but unbelievable, you know? And when you go to Gordon's, they have like people selling puppies outside on the street and stuff. It's interesting. But that was, just, I've never seen someone actually selling a hawk on this by the side of the street. See you later. Okay, here I am at the Gordon's Market. Regular kind of supermarket. I thought this was kind of weird. I look closely at the sign. It says that they have Mexican food. Now, how many Mexicans do you know are in Papua New Guinea? <laughs> They've got tons of Asian food, Asian sauces and stuff, and noodles. All sorts of noodles, all sorts of stuff, instant noodles, but they've got tortilla triangles, they've got burrito kit, they've got uh, wraps for quesadillas and tortillas. How many Mexicans are in Papua New Guinea? <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> okay, so I need to look around and find stuff here. All right, well, come with me. Spices, they probably, oh, well, they've got honey. I think I've got enough honey for now. So I don't need to buy any. Oh, I do need to buy peanut butter. I'm hoping they have uh, what I'm looking for. Sanitarium is the best. It's made by, I think, Seven Day Adventists in Australia. So, let's see what they got here. Mm, they got craft. Yeah. They have sanitarium. It's about as expensive as craft. I guess I'll get sanitarium. I hate people like that. You know, a guy stands in front of me and doesn't take anything. It's like people, it's the same everywhere in the world. Back at Stop and Shop in New Jersey, you know, you get people who walk down all the way down the aisle, stand in front of you where you're standing, you know, poke around, look at this, take that off the shelf, and then they don't buy it. But they have to look at everything, you know. Okay, the jams are pretty... I'm not really satisfied with the jams, I have to say. They have a lot of like these blackberry and boysenberry. Cool. But the jams are kind of, they have seeds in them and whatnot. So, let's see, they got this real fruit black currant jam. And they don't tell you if it's seedless or not. So I guess they assume that you know that there are seeds in Stuff like blackcurrant or boysenberry. Don't tell you it has seeds in it. <sighs> so, I guess I'm going to, I guess for now I'm okay with the jams. I'm looking for spices, what I'm looking for. I'm looking for garlic. A ham spread. That must be one of those awful British things like salmon spread and stuff like that that you put on, uh, you know, bread, you spread on bread for tea and stuff like that. And it tastes awful. Here's what I'm looking for, garlic, minced garlic. Just cheap minced garlic. Oh, and look what they have here. They have paneer, I got more paneer, and you also got bhajis, which is very nice. So I got that. All right, so I'm just showing you this for now. I'll show you some other things later. Some really hot, spicy stuff. Korean chili and garlic, African bird's eye. I have no idea what African bird's eye is. Peppers, water, vinegar, onions, red Thai chili. Red Thai chili does not sound very African to me, nor do red peppers. Sunflower oil, salt, bird's eye chili. Okay, so I'm looking for one thing that makes it African. Bird's eye chili, maybe? 
but chilies are from the New World. They're not from Africa, so don't exactly know what's African about peppers or chilies. It's made in South Africa. So it's kind of African, I guess. All right, I'll see you later. I was usually buying this spam. They have a lot of spam here. People like pork. I was buying this ox and palm pork luncheon meat. It says it's a product of China, so it's cheap. That's why I was buying it. But you know what? I think I'll pass on stuff like that from China from now on. I'm looking for something else. This is a product of Denmark. Yeah, you know what? Do I trust the people from Denmark? Unfortunately, the people of Denmark have to make things complicated and they can't give you one of those pull-off um, tops. Like on a soda can, they have to give you a key, so... Sorry, people. Thanks for making it complicated. Mm. Ox and palm doesn't sound very Chinese to me, but it is. And you have tulip, although I just looked at tulip. Fabulous. Let's see where fabulous is from. I think I just checked it. I think it's also from China. Yep. Nope, nope, nope. I don't think so. I don't think so. Not when it comes to food. I've been eating it. It's been good, but I didn't really check to see where it was from. I thought ox and palm didn't sound very Chinese, didn't, didn't uh, create the uh, impression of China in my head. Hmm. It seems like everything here is kind of ox and palm. Corned beef. This is corned beef. I'm not interested in corned beef. We have cans of stuff, mackerel and tuna fish. Don't want that. So, hmm, corned meatloaf globe. Let's see where that's from. Might have to just bite the bullet and get the stuff from the uh, Danish, the Danes, even though they give you a key and. I can't see where this is from. Oh. Dragon it looks like it's packed in Medang. That doesn't mean it's made in Medang. Does that mean it's Papua New Guinea? It says Papua New Guinea made. The question is, do I really trust... I hate to say it, do I trust something like that from... Well, I've been drinking milk from Papua New Guinea and honey and so I can't really turn my nose up at uh, corned meatloaf so I wonder if they have any uh, braised steak and onions I don't see any uh, see corned beef that's Hereford I don't see any pork which is rather surprising if it's if it's from PNG because I mean pork is the national food. Okay, well we'll see what happens. Ma Ling beef lunch and meat. Now Ma Ling sounds Chinese to me. Let's see where it's from. Yeah, it's got Chinese characters on it. Product of China. Big surprise. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think I might go for the Danish stuff. I hate to sound kind of... I don't know. Are the standards here in PNG better than... Um, China? Maybe. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to stop thinking about this. Goodbye. You know, like any other place in the world. Here at checkout. Oh, little guys. An ice cream place. Cigarettes abound. See you later. <laughs> it just shows you how dumb I am. I finally figured out to put all the stuff in the back here. 
so that I can get at it easily when I get in that extremely narrow garage type thing, whatever you want to call it. It's all dark now. You can see the SP Brewery over there. It's all dark. It's still kind of raining. Well, at least we had sun for like a day and a half or so, but now it's back to raining. All right, well, ooh, it's windy too. I hope I don't lose my hat. All right, I'll see you later, and it's very cool. You know, it's usually, this this would be cold weather for a lot of Papua New Guineans because it is windy and it's, it is kind of cool. So when you go into the, the store, Gordon's with uh, the air conditioning on, ooh, it's quite chilly. All righty, I'll see you later. Okay, so here I am. I think I'll just uh, stick this in the thing here so you can kind of see me. Uh, it's rush hour in Port Moresby. Yes, even Port Moresby has a rush hour starting around 5 p.m. So I'm just stuck here. So I guess I'll just talk. As I was saying, it's kind of, it's a uh, rainy night, rainy afternoon. Uh, there's a cool, humid breeze. And it's funny how, how much this weather reminds me of home. You know, it reminds me of, I think I've mentioned it before in another video, but how much it reminds me of New Jersey in fall when it's like the end of September and it's starting to get cooler, but there's still that warmness and humidity in the, in the air. Uh, you know, when it rains a little bit and it gets dark, darker and, uh, the, you know, the leaves start falling off the trees. So you have the little bits of leaves and stuff starting to blow in the wind and show up on the sidewalks and on the roads. And that's kind of like what it is here. And it was, um, I'm going to turn the light on so you can see me. It was kind of um, nice for the last day or so. The sun was out and uh, things were starting to dry up and then it rained, it started raining again. And this is really unusual from what I'm told. It's supposed to be the dry season. It's supposed to be brown. All the grass is supposed to be brown and the trees and everything, but it's not. But you don't, you can't trust what people say because so many people are from different regions of Papua New Guinea that for all I know, they're telling me what it's like, the weather is like in their region. But never, but still people who have lived here like Brandon and Rebecca, Father uh, Martin. Um, have to, oh, there might be an accident up here. Maybe this is more than just rush hour because people are trying to get over. Um, you know, they've kind of told me that yes, it, you know, last year it gets got brown and there was just no rain anywhere. So I guess that's the way it is. It's supposed to be. It's not the way it is now. And I would really actually prefer the brown. Whether well, there's a dude out jogging. Oh, that's weird. He's a rugby player, he looks very muscular. Kind of small, but he's muscular, very muscular, beefy, out there jogging. I mean, I think he's one of the few people I've seen around here actually jogs. I mean, it's, no one needs to jog because they're all in pretty good shape. It doesn't mean they're in good health, it just means that they're in good shape, physically speaking, and they're not fat or overweight. You know, they've got muscles, and health-wise, no, because people get all sorts of parasites and diseases here. So, uh, anyways, um, yeah, it looks like there's some problem. Traffic's like backed up. Otherwise, it's either a problem, an accident, or, uh, oh yeah, here we have a, a, a truck has, uh, it's, uh, a truck has, uh, conked out on the road has broken down, but, you know, that could be New York City, <laughs> you know, in New York City, whenever you listen to the radio in the morning, when I'd listen to the radio in the morning on 1010 winds going into Jersey City, you know, uh, there's some wreck or some, something broken down on the George Washington Bridge, you know, so, 
welcome to city life. So anyways, so this is, I guess, unusual weather where it's sunny for a few days and then you have a few days of rain. I hate it because when it rains here, it's already a very humid country. The whole country is humid. I don't care what they tell me about the highlands up in the mountains. If I go up into the mountains, it's still, I'll bet you money, it's still humid. It's still humid. But, uh, but you know, nevertheless, maybe I'm wrong about that. But most of the country is humid. Let's say that. Um, so, when it rains, everything becomes damp. Almost mildewy in a way. Everything becomes damp. And uh, you feel wet all the time. And it's muddy mud and muck all over the place. Um, and the closest it reminds me is to Ireland and to some extent England, but I was, wasn't was in England that much. I was there to visit Seth, but Ireland, and that's one of the things I hated about Ireland. I loved a lot about Ireland. I, I wouldn't mind living there, I guess, but uh, it's a nice country. Um, but uh, the weather sucked. The, the weather sucked. I think the happiest time I had in Ireland was when it snowed across the country. They had a snow, major snowstorm. For them, a major snowstorm. Maybe, eh, maybe it was a foot of snow. Maybe a little bit more. But it wasn't a great, a huge snowstorm by New Jersey standards. But for them, it was a huge snowstorm. And I loved it. It was one of the few times where, oh man, the humidity just kind of broken for a little bit, you know? And even if there, even if it was kind of humid, it was still cold, you know? It's just, oh man, it was beautiful. But that reminds me, you know, this reminds me of Ireland because Ireland, you know, in the winter time, in the spring, in the spring, it pours rain all the time and it gets so inundated that you can't even walk on the grass because the grass will ju you just sink down into the mud and you'll slip and slide. It's awful, 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 awful. So this kind of reminds me of that because they don't really have any drainage here. You know, any drainage that they have has kind of fallen apart and hasn't been fixed. So they have rivers and the rivers flood and they overflow and they, you know, block the bridges. Um, you know, I hope I can get back. I mean, this is pretty bad traffic. This is, this is unusual traffic. I don't remember, I've come back before in the dark and the traffic hasn't been that, this bad. So maybe there's another accident or maybe the rain has, uh, kind of like Jersey City, the rain has kind of uh, made a river overflow or a drain overflow. So we'll see. So yeah, the weather's been kind of weird. Um, I'd prefer sunny and hot and humid without the rain but we haven't had that while I've been here so everything that has been every, everything at CTI has been kind of abnormal has not been the greatest even the weather you know you couldn't can't even rely, I couldn't even rely on the weather to be uh, um Lot, be, be normal, you know? Even the weather has to be acting up, be abnormal. Um, raining all the time. I mean, it's it gets so uh, damp that I can't even tape things to the wall in my room. That's how bad it gets. Or your clothes have to stay on the line for days because there's no sun out, you know? There's no heat out to dry them off, you know, so I come out two days later after they've been on hanging on the line two days and I feel them and they're still kind of damp. You know, it just could also be the time of day. It usually gets damp and humid in the mornings and the evenings, so maybe I'm just 
coming out and trying it or feeling them at the wrong time of day. But no, I, I think that it's just the weather. Okay, so I've been chatting about that. I don't want to just keep yakking. So uh, I'm going to sign off for now. See you later. All right, so it does look like we have an accident up here. There's some PMV behind me that's like coming through the back of the car. This guy's got to back off. But anyways, so I'll see you later. Oh, maybe in a minute. Uh -huh. I can hear him revving his engine. Oh, I'm creeping along here, buddy. I'm going to get back off. These PMV guys are awful. I mean, they all have a reputation. Nobody likes them. They're just awful drivers. And they're very aggressive and dangerous drivers. Um, so. Some guy is just standing here. Don't know why. <sighs> Looks like I'm going to have to drive up on the sidewalk to get around, but... I got close enough. Hmm. Yes. I hope nobody was hurt. I mean, I have to say that I am relieved that it's not flooding because flooding can just trap you in, in the city, you know. So... see what happens. Okay. I just wanted to give you an update on what it seems to be. I don't know why we're still not moving and going around the wreck, but I don't know. There is a police truck up in front, just the car in front of this taxi cab. There's a police car, but I think they're off duty because they don't seem to be going to this whatever, the scene. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Alright, so here's another update. I guess it wasn't an accident or isn't an accident because we all kind of pulled over into the right-hand lane. That's why I'm in the right-hand lane for, for, for which I had to fight a PMV who was trying to cut me off. Um, the guy who was, you know, dogging me and uh, riding my back. And now we're just, like, creeping along and, uh, and it sucks because it's a stinking manual transmission. So I've got to have my foot on the brake and the clutch. And the clutch is really stiff. And it's, it's uncomfortable. It's, pain, it's becoming even painful. But I can't take my foot off the clutch because the car will stall. At least I think I can't because I tried it once and the car stalled. <laughs> so, you know... Um, so anyways, um, I'm looking ahead. May I guess it, maybe it is, I guess it just is traffic where there's a traffic circle up, for, up, uh, uh, ahead. Um, it could just be traffic. Although I don't know. I don't see a lot of uh, cars coming around on that side to get into the traffic, get it to, to, to merge. So maybe there is something up front. But I don't know. I mean, the police car, a whole bunch of cars in front of me got over into the right lane. So I thought, oh, there must be a car up up ahead in the left lane that's broken down. Nope, there's nothing here. Nothing there. There's nothing there in that lane. You know? So I got over here for nothing, apparently. I could have just stayed where I was and not almost gotten killed by that jerk. I'm sorry, you know, but he was a jerk who almost ran me over for some reason. I don't know where he wanted to go. I mean, there was nowhere to go, but he was going to be damned that I stayed in front of him. Anyways, but, you know, I still cut him off. <laughs> New Jersey, baby, you know. Once you've, once you've had to deal with rush hour umpteen million times on Route 80 in New Jersey, you know, I'm not afraid of some some incompetent driving a PMV.
You know, you're not going to scare me, buddy. I didn't want to get into an accident, but neither did he. So, <laughs> you know, I had to rely on my craziness over his crazy, you know, that I was crazier than he was. Um, nevertheless, then when we came over to the right hand side, to the right lane, the left lane was open. There was nothing there. So I don't know why we came over, why people started putting their signals on. And the PMV guy just sped around me and went all the way up. So he's gone somewhere, I guess. Good riddance anyways, but he beat me in the end, I guess. Um, so we'll see what's going on up here. We're getting to the traffic circle, you know. Uh, oh, man. I'll tell you, I'll have earned my Indian food. I got some nice Indian food. I spent a lot of money. I spent, uh, I think, 130 30 some dollars at the Indian restaurant and yeah, I think around almost a hundred at the store because it was like 260 well maybe not even a hundred that might have been around 60 maybe 70 dollars at the store so okay so all right you know I spent a bunch of money but darn it I really darn it I really need the Indian food you know because I'm just I'm just not I don't feel well. You know, I'm sad and lonely and scared. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not scared of anybody. I'm just scared of, you know, it's Tuesday. I haven't gotten anything done on anything, really. And it's already going on 7.30 at night. And maybe I should just stay up tonight. Maybe I, I always say that and then I never do it, <laughs> but maybe I should tonight. And, you know, I've got two weeks and the two weeks go by so fast. And, uh, I just never feel like I'm fully prepared. Yeah. Must be something here at the traffic circle. I don't know. We'll see what, what it is. <sighs> Anyways. God bless you all. I'll see you later. Well, I just drove past a police officer. They were directing traffic. And I think a taxi cab was also kind of pooped out there. So I guess they were just keeping an eye on it. And I just decided I would ask. I said, officer, you know, traffic, you know, accident, traffic, just traffic. And he said, no, flooding, it's flooding. Yep. It's flooding. Uh, I guess the pump broke or they've got a pump up there now. I don't know. But there's flooding, so I guess people are creeping through the water. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, that was my worst fear. Uh, I, because it's like Jersey City. Jersey City, you know, it floods at the drop of a hat and it's awful and it cuts off roads and stuff, but this is not even I mean that's that's bad and that's bad. That's embarrassing that Jersey City doesn't have its act together with the flooding by now. But this is worse because the roads suck and they don't have the tech they don't have the equipment to 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 uh, deal with it and they certainly don't fix anything They're certainly not going to start digging drainage and putting in pumps anyway so yeah you're we're stuck i mean there's one really one main road in and out going to moresby from bomana and this is this is it so i'm screwed so let's hope i get back Hopefully by 10. <laughs> I hope I hope I get back by 10. You know? I was going to say 9, but then I'm thinking, like, who knows what's beyond, you know? Who knows what's beyond on the way to Bomana? All right. I'll see you later. Yeah, PNG. Land of the unexpected. Because you shouldn't expect too much. Yep. All right, so here we are. There's a cop over there. Say hi, Michelle.
my cousin's a police officer. So you can say hi to your brother, brothers in blue, brothers and sisters in blue. Okay, we can see the water here. It's actually not too bad. It's blocking one lane. I don't know why people people are going crazy about it. Oh wait, no, nope, there's more. It's it's actually worse. I'm letting this car in front of me go ahead. Yes, I know. Well, now we got another person who's just gonna try and pull him from come up beside me. No, don't do that. Hello, mister. Here's a police officer. Say hello to your brother police officer. Oh, drive directing me through. Thank you, mister. Thank you, mister. Thank you, officer. Okay. Oh, man, my foot. The toes on my foot are asleep, fell asleep because I had to hold the clutch for so long. Okay, I've got to put the phone away. Goodbye, everybody. Alright, I can't get the damn thing to go off.